what is Azeroth at war? So I've already been making a ton of videos on this server, but unlike the other private servers that I cover, I didn't start off with a what is this server? I started off with, ooh, this is an up and coming server and all I did was react to their very first trailer after reading about them on Reddit when they were first coming out and announcing the server. I was like the first YouTuber to cover it. But that, re that aside, what actually is it? What are the different features? Well, now that I've been following it and covering it for a while, I can say with certainty what this server will offer at least right now as of uh, March 27, 2003, right? Because I know for a fact, because I know for a fact there is a lot more yet to be announced. I'm just going to go over what we know so far, how things are going to go. I'll try to put some chapter chapters in the video if you want to skip around and see what there is. I'm going to show you what little footage and screenshots we have right now so you don't have to look at my ugly face the entire time. Let's get into it. Alright, so first we're going to be starting off with the new custom races. Let's start with the Horde. So first of all, the Horde are, are going to have playable Ogres. They're going to have playable Forest Trolls, Ice Trolls, Murlocs, Goblin, while the Alliance are going to be having Naga. Broken, Furbolg, High Elves, and Worgen. All of them are going to have working armor, which is unheard of for any of these races. Well, at least like Ogre and Murlocs when, you know, Furbolg. The Worgen that we're going to be able to play as are from, is from the alpha version of Cataclysm before they change what they look like before Cataclysm release. The Goblins are going to be vanilla Goblins, which we have seen them wear player armor before on other their servers so that's not too you know surprising forest trolls ice trolls ogre though and fur bogs those are the ones that have never had armor on them before at least player armor so seeing this is going to be a much needed surprise it's going to be awesome now people are going to ask well what about the naga the naga uh they can wear player armor they always have been able to wear player armor the only slot they cannot wear is the headpiece i do not know if it's going to be fixed for this server i know for murlocs while all of the armor pieces do work he said that the shoulders and head are giving him issues however he can work around shoulders he's probably going to leave it so they don't wear helmets i'm perfectly fine with that i don't want to hide my naga's beautiful face after all right <laughs> nor the murlocs but anyway we're going to go down to the new class which is going to be the necromancer so the necromancer as you could tell is going to be one who controls the dead they're going to be a caster type of class that's going to have two specs going to have a DPS spec and a tanking spec. Yes, cloth, magic, tanking. Oh yeah. Anyway, with this new class, there's also going to be new class race combinations, such as the human hunter, shaman, necromancer. You have dwarves who could be shaman, mage, necromancer, and warlocks. You're going to have gnome, necromancer, and priest, night elf mages, Orcs can be mages, necromancers. You have undead who can be hunters, necromancer, and paladin. Tauren can be priests, rogues, and paladin. Trolls can be warlocks. Blood elves can be warriors. Now you're going to see a little bit of gameplay in the background of the necromancer. This was during my Q&A with Gromash, who is the head developer. And if you want to see more of this, please check out that video. Also... A couple of days ago, I would have just done another live stream with Gromash. So please check out all of the new information that he's going to be showcasing off then. Anyway, let's continue on to the sub races. So sub races, unlike the new races, are going to be optional 
transformations that you can turn your character into a sub race at end game through a quest chain that you will get to unlock it. So think of Turtle Wow. I know everyone here is familiar with Turtle Wow. You have the disguises, right? That you could turn into a fur bog or a worgen or I have the knoll on my character. It's going to be very similar. You turn it on and it stays on permanently. It'll persist through death persist through mounting and other things such as that also these sub races as you were are gonna also be able to wear armor you're gonna have all types of races we've never seen wear player armor before wear player armor including these sub races now i know for a fact there are a lot more that are not listed here so the first one is going to be the Tygon, which any race will be able to unlock. If you're unfamiliar with the Tygon, they are a race, uh, well not really a race, they are a transformation blessed to somebody from Wild Gods. You'll see it in Zul'Gurub with the Tiger Boss and the Panther Boss after they've been blessed by the Loa to become their avatar. This can technically happen to any race, it's just more common with the Trolls since they have more of an affinity to the Wild Gods named Loas. But really, any race can become one if they, you know, praise that lower wild god. So, that's going to be interesting. Now, that's one that anyone can become. From there, you're going to have race-specific ones. Humans are going to be able to have fat models and thin models, which there are fat and thin human models in the game. They are more from the alpha version of World of Warcraft, but never got an graphical update. So... We've seen them before, you know, they look like the mayors or those, you know, skinny rogues that you see in Dead Mines, stuff like that. The dwarves are going to have Dark Iron, Elemental, and Stone variant. The night elves are going to be able to come Satyr. Gnomes are going to be Leper Gnomes. Worgen, are Worgen will become Feral Worgen, which are basically the vanilla version of the Worgen, which is personally my favorite. The orcs are going to be able to have Fell Orc, Chaos Orcs. Then you're going to have Torin, who could become the Tonka. Undead, who can become Skeletons. Trolls can become Faraki, which are the sand trolls you see in Zulfarak. Blood Elves can become Dark Elves, which are the Dark Rangers that you see following around Sylvanas. They'll also become a Forsaken Elf, which I am actually not sure what a Forsaken Elf is. At first, I thought they were a Wretched Elf, but Wretched Elf is also listed. So, there's that. Again, all of these are going to be able to be obtained, I believe, at end level or end game through quest chains, depending on what race you are. Now, I've just been talking about the races and the classes that you're going to be able to play as, but what about the other features of the server? Surely there's more to the server than just being able to play a Naga or a Satyr or a Fel or... Yes, there is a lot more stuff to this server. First of all, you're going to have class reworks, which that's to be expected given a, you know, custom private server. A lot of these private servers do try to rework the classes. That's no different here. But another thing that's going to be a well-needed quality of life that, you know, I've never seen any other private server do before is you're going to be able to choose your own starting zone. At least within your faction, you're not going to be able to have an orc start in the human starting zone, for example, but... Between the Alliance, you can choose if you want to be a Night Elf to start in the Human Starting Zone or the Dwarf Starting Zone. And this is including all of the expanded races such as the Furbolg and the Naga. Meanwhile, the Horde, if you want to play as a Murloc, you can start in the Murloc Starting Zone or you could start in the Orc Starting Zone. On top of that, there's going to be new starting zones for each of the new races and an optional just starting zone in general that will be for all of the different races. So there's going to be a default horde starting zone on top of the racial starting zones. As well as, you know, for the Alliance, because, you know, can't forget those stinking Alliance. The leveling is going to be much easier. First of all, it's going to be a Wrath of the Lich King style experience rate. So not as fast as, you know, Cataclysm and Beyond is certainly, you know, not nearly as fast as Ascension or anything like that, but it's going to be much faster than Times 1 Vanilla like Turtle Wow. So you're going to have a good, you know, in the middle sort of leveling. I would say in order to get to end game, it's going to be roughly one to two weeks if you're playing casually. If you're playing 
all day, every day, a couple of days tops is all you're gonna need. But it's gonna be much better as almost all, now not every single zone, but most of the zones, if not half of the zones, are going to be reworked with new custom questing. Now the layout itself might be a little bit different in terms of building placements and stuff like that, but you're not going to have a complete Terra Mesh transformation like we saw in some other private server. But all of the questing will be completely custom to stories, which the story will mostly take place in vanilla time zone with a little bit of difference here and there that's to be determined. The head developer Gromash has confirmed that he does not like, you know, the kill 10 bears and collect 10 bear ass kind of quests. No, you might have some of that, but instead you're going to have a lot more focus on action style questing. You're going to have a lot of quests that you're going to be in vehicles, sneaking, you're going to have a lot of events and timed events. Do you remember as a death knight, you have to wait a few minutes in order to charge onto the Lights Hope Chapel with all of the other players waiting to start with you? Yeah, there's going to be a lot of events like that where you have to wait a few minutes, but once it's ready, Everyone, including you, can rush in and do attacks on villages, attack on an enemy camp, all that kind of stuff. You're going to have all new quest line, randomized events. But again, this is only happening to half, if not most, of the zones. A lot of zones such as Mulgor and Darkshore are not going to be touched at the start. This is going to be for launch. But he did confirm after launch, those zones that have not been touched yet that will remain the same will be revisited and reworked later on. He doesn't have enough time to do everything right now. Besides all of that, he's also now, bear with me and take this with a grain of salt until I explain it, there will be pet battles. Don't worry, it's not going to be like the Mr. Pandaria pet battles. When he mentioned it to me, the first thing I said was, oh no. But this is going to be a lot different. First of all, there's not going to be a pet leveling system. So you don't have to worry about leveling the 25 every single time you get a new pet. Instead, they're all going to be defaulted to level 1, and it'll just depend on your pet type, as well as your skill in battle. Yes, skill, because it's not going to be turn-based. It's going to be dynamic action combat. Basically, how you're fighting in PvP against another player, that's how it's going to be, or, you know, in PvE, PvP, doesn't matter. That's how it's going to be fighting against these pets. You're going to actually be in there like a vehicle system, almost, and fight you know, pet to pet. It's not a turn-based system. He's also come out and said that there's going to be custom token system for gear at endgame. There's going to be faction as well as neutral world bosses that will be new. And by faction world bosses, I'm talking about, does everyone remember characters like Rexar walking out in the world and Nathanos, you know, Nathanos in the Eastern Plague Lands, even though he's friendly to the horde, the alliance can go and turn him into a raid boss and kill him. Of course, you're not rewarded for that. A lot of these enemies, as well as new enemies, will be, you know, full-on world bosses for you to fight. There will be a possible guild system update. Coming in the near future is also going to be a new Winter Grasp style battleground. So a new in-world battleground, not instance like AV. That's to be determined on what it is. So we have to wait around for that. He's also going to be adding Transmog, which we don't know how the Transmog system will work. If it's going to be like Dust Caven or Turtle Wows, we do not know. There's going to be new skins for your character. We're going to go back to characters real quick, because on top of having your sub-races, as well as the new updated classes and races, you're going to have new skins, which is going to involve, you know, being a brown orc or being a wild hammer dwarf, all that kind of stuff. But that's going to be integrated into your character selection screen. So it's going to be available to you from the start, not at endgame like the sub races. He is working on an optional HD patch with graphical updates similar to retail. So if you do not like the classic look, you know, stick around and he will develop the HD patch that will make it look more like retail. Though, I think that's going to be further in development and not a priority right now so you're gonna have to wait a little bit on that but he that is in the works and he is you know he has confirmed it is happening and that's gonna be all on top of the new items pets mounts and questing systems 
Now that's everything that's planned to come out, at least for launch. There's so much more planned that will not make it to launch, but will be in future updates, future patches, including implementing the Death Knight. He's going to add more leveling zones. There's going to be profession reworks and expansions, new custom raids, dungeons, PvE content, an overhaul of classic race starting zones. There's going to be more sub races, including new areas that appear on the map and in lore, but are not in game, you know, such as Telabim. There's so many other areas in the game that we've never seen, at least in the lore game, right? You know, you have the Isle of Plunder, you have Zandalar, the Dragon Isles, all of these are on the vanilla map, but you, or they're just in the lore in general, but you've never been to them. And Turtle Wow has touched on some of these areas, but there's so much more that has never been touched by any other private zone, so there's so much potential there. Now I'm sure you have questions, right? Well, I'm gonna go through real quick the frequently asked questions. First things first. What expansion is this server on? Well, it's going to be a vanilla server, but it's taking place on a 3.3.5 client, which is basically a Wrath of the Lich King client. As of right now, Outland and Northrend are not going to become available, though it might in a future patch. This server does not have a release date as of yet, However, the first closed beta will be in roughly two to three months. That is, of course, is if everything goes, you know, according to plan and there are no hiccups. After the closed beta, it is still to be determined on when the next open beta will be. But all you have to do is join the server in order to try out this server when it becomes available into open beta. During closed beta, some members will be randomly chosen to try this out. So you have a chance if you join right now. This server will be a roleplay PvP server, so there, yes, there will be in-world PvP, it's basically a PvP server, and eventually, if they have enough players, they're looking to open a second PvE server. I personally do not like that idea, as it will split the player base, and one will die and one won't, but what can you do? I think they should just pick one and stick to it, but the first server and the primary server is going to be PvP. The maximum level you will be able to reach is level 60 as this is considered a vanilla plus server. Anyway, that's going to be the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed all of this information. If you're just learning about this server, I have an entire playlist that you're going to see somewhere around here that you could check out. I've seen a lot of the, you know, stuff on the server already as i've done all of those live streams with the head developer of him showcasing off this server so if you want to see it like right now go check out those streams i also have a couple of videos of just areas that are clipped i have an entire like almost hour-long video going through all of the different new races and their racials check it out if you haven't yet if you like this video like if you want to see more of this server i'm going to be in the closed beta i'm going to be bringing you all the fun stuff all the news we're going to be fighting mana pots if you don't know him he's another youtuber covering the server we're going to be fighting him in pvp it's going to be fun great subscribe if you want to see more hang out chill whatever i have a discord link in the description below join us see you later